All right. Last question for you, then we're going to close this out. All right. I'm going to start with you, Preacher. Hey, Shavar, can I have something to say real quick? I'm surprised you did that scripture because you know what scripture that comes to mind is? It said, when my enemies came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. They of course stumbled David and said. fell when they was about to do something. That's, that, that's what I think. Because, I mean, I'm so filled with God. I, I even tell people, I say, you don't mess with me because I, I'm a child of God. God is going to fight my battle. But I'm just saying, that scripture says, my, when my enemy came to fall, they eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Or if they came with, with, um, into you one way, they leave out seven different ways. Well, but that's Mike knows what I'm talking about. Brother Taj, I'm saying, every, we have to go to God. <laughs> we got to bring people. We, and we're going to do it. We're going to do Taj, it. And we're going to play that song about about public Brothers gonna work it out. The brothers Taj, is gonna work it out. Preacher, let me ask you a question. Taj, let me ask you a question. All right. Uh, I, now you, you're about to hang yourself on this one. On yesterday, over the weekend, my last county was 67 shot in Chicago, and two of them. 77. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, they said from Thursday because I just seen it a few uh, about an hour ago from. Tasha, you're freezing out. 6 p.m. Thursday, 10 shot. 7 shot. 17 died. Okay, let me, I want you to get this now. Now, one of them, two of them, okay. one was an eight-year-old boy that was killed in Inglewood. Another was a seven-year-old girl, mm -hmm. okay? Now, Taj, mm -hmm. what did that yeah. little girl boy do to deserve to get shot like that, okay? Now, don't you think... Okay, just, to me now. okay now you're asking me this now, right? Now, I'm going to try to hopefully say it right. Cortez, Mac, Mark, and um, what oh, was the other ladies? finish the question. Cortez, can you please, I mean. Uh, just answer, just, just answer the question. No, he already let said him, the question. You, you said about the video. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Guys, go ahead. Guys, go ahead. Guys, so I'm going to answer it. And, um, I'm going to try to be as, as, as straightforward as Taj, possible. Taj, I'll buy the Go ahead. The, the Bible tells you in Proverbs, it tells you the answer before listening is your very folly. That's your folly. So if you, <laughs> if you don't even hear what somebody okay, is saying. So ask me the question. I'm sorry. I, I thought you had finished. I'm sorry. Can you repeat okay. it again? All right. And, and, and keep smiling, Victoria. We appreciate you smiling. All right. Now, through all of this. But we're friends, so we can talk like this. But anyway. <laughs> um, so the point is this. That young child, don't you think that young child's mother prayed every night that God protect that child in everything? Eight years old, seven years old, innocent. You know, a seven year old is nothing but a, a second grader. All right. Eight year old is a third grader. Mm -hmm. You think that mom woke up that day thinking she was going to have a child that she was going to be burying now? And, and her question she's asking is, where was God? to protect my child. Now, I'm just telling you, I'm a minister too, but I'm just telling you, preacher, you say this stuff about, um, you know, pray to God and he's going to protect from my enemies and this and this and that. What enemies did that eight-year-old have but a stray bullet or a seven-year-old? So please answer that for me. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to answer this one. And then Cortez, Matt, please don't beat me up on this one. Notice what I said before. And when I went with the Bible, I said, if my people... Because if you went on and understood that saw the mom and it didn't look right, they end up saying that it was a retaliation from a gang. Listen to me. There's gangs. There's families, mothers and fathers that are in gangs. They bore children that are gangs. So if they go, if you shoot them, that's what they had said. It was a retaliation from something that had happened, I think, a week or so ago. You ha we have to we have to be true about things. There's a, a lot of our people that are lost. They lost to the streets. They're doing games. They're they're committing crimes and stuff. We have to make sure that we understand that. It sounds right that we're praying for them, but you look at some see some of the families that are there, they ain't praying to God. They, they, that's all I'm saying. We have to Rightly divide the word of God. Some people are for God, some are for it. Unfortunately enough, those that's happening, yes, it's sad. Okay, preacher. I'm gonna I want to hear from you. You in the game, that's a whole different 
Okay, I'm gonna I want to hear from and then I'm gonna hear yours, Cortez, and I'm gonna hear Jay Yoakum. Okay. Go ahead, Victoria. I'm sorry. What was the question? So, um, do you agree <laughs> with the response of what Cortez said? I'm sorry, what Todd said about um, the reasoning behind an eight year old getting murdered or a seven year old getting murdered? That where was God? Correct. I think sometimes in order to see the actual system of oppression, you have to talk about God like he's there and talk about God's enemy like he's there. So if God is the source of everything good then the, and Satan is the source of everything bad, you have to look at how they fight. So if they're going to fight, it doesn't matter what color you are, but God promises healing to come. So you have to look at all of those systems. Um, when it comes to black people, if you don't understand what happened to black people first, how they got here, what systems erected from the time they got here, what systems fell, what other elements are also being affected by their presence, the psychological damage that happens from being oppressed and abused, the spiritual aspect that comes into play. So we do know that the Bible was misused to subjugate them even more. It doesn't mean that the Bible itself is wrong because we as believers don't believe that God's word is wrong, but how it was used to perpetrate lies and submission was wrong. So if we think about Black people right now in COVID, we have to look and say, hmm, Black people, especially in Chicago, are the ones dying from COVID. Also, if you look overseas, you see that the enormous amount of potential for healing to come to us through research is also being blocked. I don't know if you heard about it, but there was a ginormous church that was blamed for a huge outbreak that has now offered to donate plasma that has been denied by the government. So if you think that all of these spiritual things aren't connected, all you have to do is just think a little bit on it more. So if healing is being blocked over there that has the potential to help us here, you have to think. If we're always looking at each other and we're never thinking about God or talking about him like he's actually among us, then we'll never see what's actually happening. Very good point. Okay, very good point. All right, um, so Cortez, let me hear your rebuttal. Okay, first... I, I, out of just us, I refuse to believe that nobody on this chat don't believe in God and have faith. I, I just think when it comes to the black community, we emphasize it more than anybody. And yet, once again, we see all the damage to all our faith and our prayers. It's not a fact we don't believe, but at the end of the day, we're, we've been so conditioned just to be stuck in this realm of God is going to do everything, and we know he is able to do everything exceedingly abundantly more than we can even ask. But there's a natural part that we refuse to kind of really uh, to, to confront. And the, and, and the part that confront, this is a real natural battle we're seeing every day, even though it's spiritual. My problem with the spiritual part is, is that we're saying God is going to do everything for us, but yet on the other side of the scriptures, there's the evangelicals, there's the Catholics who are praying to God that we get killed. So we are fighting a spiritual battle, but I just think on the natural side, we have to be aware of this too. We just can't keep going to church every Sunday, but yet here's the problem with Sunday and going to church every Sunday. We still coming out the church doors, having issues with each other. <laughs> Very so, interesting. So, so, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's beyond spiritual. This is just common sense stuff that we have. Listen, I don't need Jesus to tell me to protect my family. I don't need Jesus to tell me to get up and go to my job and, and be a protect, provider for my family. You see what I'm saying? We, we, we become so spiritual that we think every decision we make has to be spiritual. I don't need to seek God to put my socks on my feet. But see... I need to seek God for wisdom on how he's going to guide me to protect my family. Because Amen. there's a lot of crazy cats out here who ain't seeking God and just carrying a gun and going to do what they're going to do. And I like the fact how you asked the question about the mother, which never got answered. We always got these hypothetical spiritual 
situations until it hit home. Correct. Correct. When it hit home, we don't hear Jesus nowhere. Interesting. Interesting point. Um, Jay Yoakum, what do you say? Well, yeah, it is a spiritual battle, but we have to keep in mind also that it's a physical battle. And in that physical battle, that means we have to take action. There's things that we need to do. We can't just sit back and just hold up a Bible because let's be a real, real realistic about it. I mean, if everybody was practicing uh, 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 their faith, none of this stuff would, would be going go. on. But everybody's, everybody's not doing that. There we have go. to be real about that. And not just say it's just spiritual. It's just about, you know, uh, 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 the Bible and stuff. Because because you still have to do more. It requires action. I mean, it requires boycotting. It requires, you know what I mean, rioting and stuff, unfortunately, in, in some cases. You know, Martin Luther King said, rioting is the voice. He said, Martin, rioting is the voice of the unheard. And he said that a long, long time ago. But... You know, it, it requires a lot of action. There's a lot of things we have to do. It's a lot of things we have to educate ourselves on. Um, so with all that being said, you know, um, and dealing with uh, police and things like that, of course, you have to be respectful. But I think as black people, we should uh, uh, arm ourselves because every time you turn around, there's someone getting hung, a gun down or, or, or something. You know, and it's just, you know, it has really been, seems like it really increased since uh, um, uh, Agent Orange has been in office. You know, he's really empowered a whole lot of people, you know, and, um, you know, it's a lot of things going on. Like I said, with the Confederate statues, he's complaining about those being taken down and, you know, all of that type of stuff, you know. So I think we just have to keep pushing and keep, while we have this momentum, keep attacking this systemic uh, racism and, and, and that requires more than just the spiritual aspect. It requires getting out and doing work and doing things as far as action and physical. That's what I mean, a physical battle. You know, and, and we should also know our rights too when dealing with, um, you know, police and things of that nature, you know, because obviously a lot of times they you know, think you don't know anything or whatever and, and you just, you know, you see all the instances with all these Karens popping up and, you know, um, <laughs> calling the police on black men over the littlest things and stuff, you know, so it, it, it's a battle. It's a battle and it's more than just spiritual, you know, so no, no. it requires us to do a whole lot of work. You know, it's a lot of work that still needs to be done. No, no, we've, been no, here, we've been here 401 years and, and, and you know, we it's still a whole lot of work that needs to be done. Amen. Now, a couple of things, um, I'm going to get out, so I'm gonna give a little final thought here. Um, now, one thing that's very interesting is that <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let Macaroni settle down for a minute because he's, he's all I'm right. Sorry, thank you. All right. Now, 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 there's something very interesting. All right. I've been in the church for about almost 30 years. Praise God. But, did you, but one thing that's very interesting is that if I go, I go to the Reseda Boulevard Church of Christ here in Southern California, okay? Now, if I was to worship at the Macon Street Church of Christ in Atlanta, Georgia, okay, um, in an all white church, even though I still go there as a preacher to uh, meet with my and mingle with my white congregation, I don't care how much Jesus I proclaim, there's still going to be some members that are racist towards me. So it goes beyond racism is so it, it's so systematic. It even goes beyond your belief in Jesus Christ, because why do you see in so many congregations? There's an all white congregation and there's an all black congregation, but they share the same beliefs. Something's wrong with that. It's exactly. to the point many times that you, are, when you're just raised some way, it'll trump anything that you believe after that, your formative years. That's very important. So um, even though you, 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 you profess the Lord, they profess the Lord, we're reading out of the same Bible, still they have limitations on how far they're going to go with this racism thing. Yeah, you, you, you believe in the same Jesus, but you're not marrying my white daughter. Oh, you're not wearing, wearing my white son. I don't care what. So just understand that I don't care. There, there is always people who profess Jesus and this and this and that. But in their mind, they got limitations. They got limitations on how they're going to love you. They got limitations on how much they're going to serve God. So just let's just call it what it is. The and I'm sorry. Can I, I'm sorry. Can I just add into that really, really quick? Yeah, sure. It, it, it's uh, KKK members. They call themselves Christians. Huh. I mean, 
you know, so come on now, you know, and I, I, I'm sorry. I just want to throw that in there. Some of them, and some of them are preachers at the church up the road, but they go home and wear white sheets. But my point is that, you know, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, there's going to come a time that people are going to be killing you as Christians thinking they're offering a service to God. So just understand that exactly. it's going on right now. Now, my point is that uh, we men are here to protect and provide for our women and our families and to take care of them. And sometimes we just have to buckle up and do that. But my thing that we have to very much understand is that um, we don't want to come off as overrighteous or self-righteous. We hear about self-righteous a lot, but we don't hear about overrighteous. Overrighteous is when you try and live a life and thinking that you can be perfect without the Lord or that you're going to be perfect on this side of life. It's not going to happen. That's why you get so many people walking away from the gospel because they go, they, they go to an overrighteous, self-righteous church, Cortez. And as soon as they see a, a, a member of the church, a woman, and they sleep with her and mess around with her, now all of a sudden they feel they did the worst scene ever. So they got to leave and go back to the world they used to because people are going to be like, you did what? You slept with Sister Loretta and you coming here? And mind you, there's a saying about the preacher. When a preacher gets up there to preach every time, one woman says he dressed nice. The other woman said he dressed fast. The point is, <laughs> he was back there with one of the sisters, and, you, and she was the one sitting back there with you. So stop it. I've seen it all. We have to be sober-minded. We got to be sober-minded with it. Um, I love you all. I appreciate you all being a part of it on the Sherrod Show. I hope we didn't offend too many people, but sometimes the truth, the Bible said the truth to set you free, but I always say the ugly truth will get you killed. But bottom line to it is, I thank you, Cortez Mack, Taja Gina Jones, Victoria, um, I thank you for being a guest on the show, as well as Mark J. Yoakum. I really appreciate that. This makes for some great and interesting topics, and I hope you all come back Um, very soon to talk about it. The next topic we're going to talk about is sexual harassment and sexual assault. Is it, does it, is it really as legitimate as they say, or are people just throwing on false raps? So we're going to talk about that next topic. I'm Sherrod. I hope you have a wonderful evening. And on our next episode of the Sherrod show, we have Mr. Mike Tyson going to stop by and talk about a few things with me as well. You can always watch us on Comcast NBC as well as on the Psalm Network, or you can watch us on YouTube. You all have a great evening. See you next week.